Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Most people think of a nurse as a pretty girl in a starched white cap. But did you know there are growing opportunities for men, too, in nursing? Men nursing students receive the same preparation that women students do, often in co-educational schools operated by a university, college, or hospital. The many fields open to men nurses upon graduation include hospital nursing, industry, research, and mental health. Young men between the ages of 18 and 35 should look into the rewards awaiting them as a professional nurse. Or, if you are under 50, consider practical nursing. For further information, write Nursing Careers in care of your postmaster. Or inquire at your nearest school of nursing or hospital. This message is brought to you as a public service. Jim Pickens, a young newcomer to the Yukon Territory, become a partner to an established trapper, Fuzzy Norton, a bewhiskered old-timer. The two men had worked hard during the long winter season. With the coming of the summer weather, they left their cabin on Caribou Creek to take their load of pelts to the trading post in Selkirk, five miles away. Well, looks like you've been sure kept your traps busy up there in Caribou Creek. I <laughs> sure did, Mike. Uh, here's a fine bundle of furs, if I do say so myself. Yeah, and here's some more. Is that a lot? Yep. Well, now I'll get busy and figure out how much I owe you. Fuzzy and Jim lounged around with the hangers-on who used the trading post as a gathering place, while a storekeeper checked over the furs and figured the amount they were to receive. Finally, Mike went to the safe and came back with the cash. Well, fellas, I have it all figured out. Here you are, $1,550. <laughs> I'll give it to you, Fuzzy. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, Jim, we did all right with our furs, huh, boy? Sure did, Fuzzy. <laughs> I reckon you want to get you a share in your pocket so you can do a little celebrating, so I'll give it to you right now. Huh? I'll sure feel good to have plenty of cash in my pocket again. Here's your share, Jim. $500. 500 Now, wait a minute, Fuzzy. Huh? I thought I'd get half. As it is, you'll be getting twice as much as I do. Well, now, look, son. I took you in as sort of a junior partner, you might say, until you learned the ropes. But I... You see, last fall, when you were hunting for something to do, I told you to come up to Caribou Creek and help with the trap lines. That I'd give you a share of the cash. But I didn't say I'd give you half, Jim. You have no right holding out on me, Fuzzy. Well, I figure I'm being mighty fair by giving you the 500. Next year, maybe, we'll be equal partners and split 50-50. Oh, yeah? As far as I'm concerned, we're through right now. And what's more, if you are bigger and younger, hey, I... Easy, should... Jim, easy. Don't say things you'll be sorry for. Well, sure, son. No you should get no riled up. I didn't aim to hurt your feelings. I, I want to do the right Forget thing. Forget it. Keep all the cash, if it means that much to you. I never thought you'd try to cheat me out of my share. And believe me, you'll be sorry later that you did. I'm getting out of here right now. Doggone it, Mike. I must be an old fool to get the boy riled up at me like that. Maybe, after all, I should have set the deal in the beginning. Well, frankly, I think you're being generous with the lad, Fuzzy. 
Oh, maybe when he thinks things over, Jim will come to you and apologize. In fact, you might find him waiting at the cabin when you go back home. Do you really think so? Well, go down it, I'll find him and tell him he can have all the cash rather than have our friendship busted up. Well, I'll be seeing you, Mike. I hope you're right about Jim being out there. A short time after Old Fuzzy left the trading post and headed on his horse for Caribou Creek, two of the men who had been lounging in the store walked along the main street toward the cafe. That old guy Fuzzy was heading out of town toward the trail to Caribou Creek as we came out of the store, Ness. Yeah, I saw him. He's heading for Caribou Creek, and he still has that $1,500 with him. Hey, by golly, that's right, he has. But how do you Look, figure we... The fellas in the store heard Fuzzy's friend Jim Pickens threaten the old man. Threaten him? Yeah, yeah, just before we went out. Jim told Fuzzy, you cheated me. And later you'll be mighty sorry you did. You remember him saying that? Yeah. Yeah, I do remember. Sure. Some of the others who were there will remember, too. If we sort of remind him when the constable comes asking questions when he hears about Fuzzy. Here's what about Fuzzy? That he was shot and robbed on the trail. Get our horses right now, take a shortcut, and get ahead of Fuzzy. When he comes along, we'll shoot him from ambush, then grab the cash and beat it. Naturally, everybody will think Jim Pickens did it to get even, you savvy? Say, that is a good plan, Slim. By Jiminy, I think it'll work out, too. Sure it will. Circle back to town and stay at the cafe the rest of the day. When Fuzzy is found, they won't know when he was shot. And we'll be safe from suspicion. Okay, here's the horses. Let's get yeah. started. Steady, steady. Come on. Get him. Let's get him. Meanwhile, after leaving the trading post, Jim Pickens entered the hotel across the street and approached the hotel keeper in the lobby. Morning, Jim. Haven't seen you around lately. I was beginning to think maybe you and Mary had, had a bust up. Nothing like that, Mr. Tate. We were busy getting our pelts ready to bring into the trading post. Is Mary here? Sure, I'll call her. You, you wait a minute. Mary, Jim's out here to see you. I'll come right out, Dad. Yes. It's about time you came to see me. I've been wondering if maybe something had... Is there something wrong? You look angry. I'm burned up at fuzzy. He and I are through. Oh, Jim. I thought you were good friends. We were until he cheated me out of part of my share of the cash we got for our skins. Tell me about it. Briefly, Jim related what had happened at the trading post. Mary listened sympathetically. When he had finished, she said... Jim, we're engaged to be married, and you know that I'm loyal to you, don't you? Sure. Well, then please try to understand when I say, I think this is one time you're wrong, dear. Wrong? But Fuzzy tried Fuzzy to... gave you a chance, Jim, and taught you all about trapping cabin and the supplies you used were his. Well, from now on, you could pay your share of expenses and expect rightly to share equally in the money that's paid for next season's catch. But this one time, Fuzzy was due to get more than you did. It's only right and fair. Oh. I didn't know you'd see it that way. Well, you know I'm right, Jim. I, I wish you'd go to Fuzzy and straighten the matter out with him. He thinks a great deal of you. Well, I... Uh... I'm fond of the old fella, too. But... Oh, then don't be stubborn, Jim. It isn't like you. Fine, Fuzzy. Tell him you're sorry for losing your temper and that you realize he was right. Oh, do it, Jim, for my sake. Well, all right, honey. I reckon I did say things I didn't mean. I'll go find Fuzzy right now and straighten things out. Jim found out that Fuzzy had left for Caribou Creek, and he immediately set out after him. Meantime, the two crooks, Slim and Les, after taking a shortcut to get ahead of Fuzzy, had dismounted behind a ridge close to the trail. The old man ought to be coming along any time now, Les. Yeah, and when he does, he'll never know what hit him. After we get that cash... Hey, listen. Must be Fuzzy coming out. Get your gun ready. Keep out of sight as much as you can. I'm ready. ready. There he is. This'll do it. Watch out, he sees us. I'll get him this time. You hit him. Fell off his horse. Let's go over and get the cash. Come on. All right. Easy now. Steady, boy. Get up. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Oh, 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 there. oh, oh. easy. Oh. I'll get his wallet. Hey, I got it. Let's go. Is he dead? I didn't try to find out. What's the matter? He didn't see you shot him. Easy now. Come on. Yes. Yeah. We'll take the shortcut back to town. Get up. Come on. Get up, get up there, boy. 
Jim rode from town and followed the trail taken by Fuzzy. As he rounded a bend in the trail, his horse suddenly broke his stride and reared with a snort of fear as he saw a bear standing on the trail ahead. <coughs> oh, easy, fella. Hold it. Oh, bear. I'll fix him. Ah, I missed him. He's gone through the trees. I missed when my horse moved. Get up. Come on. A couple of miles further on, Jim sighted a horse standing alongside the trail. The figure lying on the ground. Someone's been thrown. By golly, that looks like Fuzzy's horse. Get up there. No, oh, hold that. Hold. Fuzzy. Fuzzy. Holy mackerel, he's been shot. Molly and a dog coming. Hold on, Hold boy. Gosh, I didn't expect to Hello, see Jim. You. What happened? Isn't that your friend, Fuzzy? Yes, he, he's been shot. Huh? I'll have a look. It's a serious wound, Jim. Fuzzy's still breathing. Do, but... you... Do you think he'll die? He will if he doesn't get medical attention. I'll give him first aid, and we'll take him to the doctor in town. All right, Sergeant. How did it happen, Jim? I don't know. Fuzzy left town before I did. I found him just a minute ago here on the trail. The trail along here is hard and smooth, and a good many people use it every day. Footprints don't show. Well, we'll take Fuzzy to the doctor as quickly as possible. I'll come back and investigate later. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. The bases are loaded. It's the last of the night. And two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. And oh, it's a grand slam home run. Be right there in the ballpark and see a grand slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Paco 10. The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat or Pop rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. When Sergeant Preston and Jim Pickens entered the doctor's office with the unconscious fuzzy, a few curious townsmen, including Mike, the storekeeper, who had seen them pass along the street, crowded in behind them. Fuzzy was taken into the doctor's back office. And while Preston and Jim sat in the waiting room, the others plied them with questions. Uh, how did it happen, Sergeant? Did Jim... Did Jim what? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing at all, Sergeant. I know what Mike was going to ask, Sergeant. He was going to ask if Jim shot Fuzzy. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Wait a minute, Jim. Why should Mike or any of you think Jim would shoot his best friend? You mean the man who used to be his best friend? They had a fallen out earlier today at the store. Jim threatened Fuzzy. You can ask Mike here. Well, Mike? Uh, yes, that's right, Sergeant. But after all, I don't think the lad would... Well, of course he was mighty riled up thinking that Fuzzy cheated him. That's true, Jim? Well, yes, but... Honest, Sergeant, I didn't shoot Fuzzy. Let me see your gun a minute, Jim. All right. One bullet missing. Yeah, I reckon with you along, he didn't have a chance to replace it. Yeah, I shot at a bear I saw on the trail. <laughs> that's a good excuse. <laughs> By the way, Sergeant... Fuzzy had $1,500 in his wallet when he left my place and headed for home. Oh? He didn't have his wallet. I noticed that when I removed his coat. Jim knew he had it. Yeah. Jim, why didn't you mention it? I was so upset. I... Well, I, I just didn't think about it. Well, how come Jim followed Fuzzy from town anyway? He said in front of us that the story he was true. That he and Fuzzy weren't to be partners anymore. I think Jim Pickens shot and robbed Fuzzy. So do I. Yeah. No, no, I didn't. Jim, I'm going to hold you on suspicion. If Fuzzy dies, the charge will be murder. But I didn't shoot him, I tell you. Search me. You won't find Fuzzy's cash. I don't have it. Hey, you could have dropped it in the bushes without Sergeant Preston seeing you. Come on, Jim. I'll turn you over to the constable. I'll continue an investigation until I'm sure of the truth. Let's get going. But, Sergeant, I'm sure. The news spread quickly. 
The two crooks, Slim and Lass, were glad to hear that Jim had been taken into custody. They were in the cafe discussing the situation. They'll never be able to prove Pickens didn't do it. Yeah, that's right. Even if the old man does regain consciousness, he couldn't give him any information that it helped. He'd have no way of knowing that his friend Jim Pickens didn't try to kill him. I reckon we're <laughs> safe enough, Liz. I'm tired of this town. Now that we have some cash, let's head for Dawson where it's more life. Hey, that suits me. After we finish eating, we'll go to the hotel and pack up our stuff. Might as well leave this afternoon. Right. <laughs> we'll read about Pickens' trial in the newspapers. If the old man dies, Pickens will hang for a murder. After Sergeant Preston saw Jim locked behind bars, he stood talking to the constable in the front office. I didn't enjoy arresting Jim Pickens. I just can't picture him as a killer. But there was a bullet fired from his gun. Yes, I know. Jim claimed he shot at a bear along the trail. No one believes him, though. Yeah, it's possible. If it turned out to be true, Sergeant, then who could have shot first? Well, if there'd been anyone else out that way, Jim or I would have met him on the trail. We came from opposite directions. Sure. So that alone shows no one else rode that trail. There's one thing more. A bullet had been fired from Fuzzy's gun. That could mean he saw the one who fired at him and tried to fight back. Well, let's hope Fuzzy regains consciousness so that he can be questioned. Let's go over to the doctor's office and see. Good idea. Come along, Jim. The two bodies left the constable's office with Yukon King. Went over to inquire about Fuzzy. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Doctor. How are you, Constable? Hello, Doctor. What about Fuzzy? How is he? He regained consciousness a short time ago. We gave him a sedative. Oh, I see. Then we can't question him right now, I suppose. No, he's sleeping. Oh, Doctor. I just heard about Fuzzy. And what they're saying about Jim. Oh, Sergeant and the Constable. Hello, Mary. Oh, Fuzzy. How is he? I think he'll pull through. Thank heaven. You say you've heard about Jim? Yes. They say he's been arrested. Is, is that true? Well, we are holding him on suspicion right now. Oh, but he didn't do it. I'm sure he didn't. In fact, he came to talk to me this morning. I persuaded Jimmy was wrong, that he should apologize and make up with Fuzzy. He left to find him and do just that. Possible they quarreled again out in the trail. Yes, it is possible. Yet somehow I don't think Fuzzy would pull a gun on Jim. He was very fond of him. And Jim looked upon Fuzzy as he would his own father. I feel sure he'd never try to harm Fuzzy. Jim, Jim, where are you? Fuzzy's awake. He's Jim. calling. Jim was here, but he left Fuzzy. He'll be back to see you later. You say Jim was here? That's right, Fuzzy. He, he was riled at me, Sergeant. The first, the first time he ever turned on me. Uh, it was all my fault, too. Fuzzy, Jim isn't angry anymore, really. Mary, are, are you sure? Oh, yes. You'll find out when you see him. Now try to rest a while. Later you'll, you'll see Jim. Oh, all right. I don't want to rest. I want to Come see out now. Jim. Sedative is taking effect. Now, Sergeant. What about Jim? Do you really Go think... home and wait, Mary. Right now, the constable and I have something to do. Perhaps we'll turn up something that will prove that your faith in Jim is justified. Thank you, sir. Come on, constable. Let's go, King. What is it we have to do, sir? Where are we going now? Well, right off the Caribou Creek Trail. We'll look closely for bear tracks for one thing. And we'll investigate this place beyond the ridge and where the shots came. Let's get the horses. Right. The two bodies with King left town and followed the Caribou Creek Trail. They rode leisurely and searched alongside the trail for tracks of the bear Jim said he had fired upon. Suddenly, just ahead, King stopped and sniffed the ground, and then barked. Constable, I think King's found those bear tracks. Yes. It's evident he's found some scent he doesn't like. Oh, Luggy, ho, ho, ho. ho. Steady, boy. Easy. Steady, boy. Huh. Look there, leading into the woods. Those are bear tracks, all right. Yes, and those are ones. Jim told the truth about seeing a bear. Perhaps, Sergeant. But that still doesn't prove he fired at it. Oh, that's right. Well, let's go on to the ridge. Right. Ready, boy? Easy, boy. Go on, King. Go up, Get him. Oh, oh. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, how about you and your whole family going to the baseball game? You'll have the time of your lives. Seeing those smashing home runs, watching exciting double plays and strikeouts, eating peanuts and Cracker Jack. Why not go this very week? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. 
Yep, admission is absolutely free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. Free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker Popped Wheat, Quaker Popped Rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. In Quaker Paco 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals Mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell Mom you want to eat lots of Quaker puffed wheat or puffed rice, muffin shredded wheat or Quaker Paco 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. Now to continue. When they reached the place where Fuzzy had been shot, the two Mounties turned off the trail and rode over behind the ridge where they dismounted. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Look there, Constable. Hoof marks of two horses and footprints. Luckily, the ground's soft right here. Well, it begins to look as though Jim didn't shoot Fuzzy after all. All right. Hoof marks and an empty cartridge. That means whoever shot Fuzzy from here rode over to rob him. I'll follow these tracks. Here, King. Pointing to the marks on the ground, Preston spoke to the intelligent dog. Get the scent, boy. Find them, King. Find. <laughs> King has the scent. From here on, we shouldn't have any trouble. Let's go. Steady, buddy. Get him. Get him. <laughs> the scent King had picked up led them to a little used back trail beyond the ridge. Following along behind the big husky, the two Mounties soon arrived at the edge of town. The scent led right back to town. Yes. But now King may become confused. You'll find too many scents to interfere with the one he's following. Don't worry. King will pick out that scent from all the others. Oh, he stopped in front of the cafe. Oh, 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 oh. Here's the men are inside right now. No, I don't think so. King indicates the men we're trailing must have stopped here but gone on. Find them, King. Find boy. The intelligent dog circled around a moment. Then once more, barked to indicate he had picked up the scent. King has the scent again. He's heading down Main Street toward the hotel. Let's go. Get up, buddy. Come on, get up. In their room at the hotel, the two crooks were busy packing to leave. Hey, got my dust pack, Les. I have a few more things to pack. Not going to take long, though. We'll have nice weather for traveling. We'll take our time. Yeah. I wonder if that old trapper will die, Slim. Uh, what if he does? Jim Pickens is already in jail for the holdup. If Fuzzy dies, he'll go on trial for murder. Yeah, while we enjoy ourselves on the case, we took from Fuzzy. Wait a minute now. There. Uh, I'm through. Good. Let's get out of here. Pay for the room and start north. Grab your bag and let's go. Yeah, right. Just a minute. Man. We want to talk to you. Get back inside. Two money. Easy, Slim. They have nothing on us. Keep them covered, Constable. Right. We were outside the door while you were talking a few minutes ago. Les, he must have heard what we said about Fuzzy. Shut up, Slim. Shutting him up isn't going to do any good. We'll search both of them, Constable. You're not right. touching me. No, me. As both crooks pulled guns, the two bodies fired, wounding each of them. Watch them, King. Now search them, Constable. Oh, right. All right. Oh, oh, easy, will you? Well, look here, Sergeant. A wallet belonging to Fuzzy. Uh -huh. Now, we found it out on the trail. Pickens must have thrown it in the bushes. You'll forget we overheard your conversation a while ago. We know you ambushed Fuzzy. Uh, he, he's still alive. You can't hold us for murder. We arrest you both in the name of the Crown for attempted murder and robbery. All right, Constable, let's get them to jail. Let's go. All, All right. right. All right. Later, at Fuzzy's bedside, Jim Pickens, Mary, and Sergeant Preston stood listening as Fuzzy talked. Uh, Jim, lad, I'm sorry. I intended to find you and give you enough to make, make it an even share. Then those crooks gunned me. No, Fuzzy, I was wrong. Mary proved that to me. I was on the way out to tell you so when I found you lying on the trail. Then the sergeant saw me there. What difference does it make anyway about the shares, Jim, dear? I'll soon be taking your share away from it. What do you mean, Mary? Is Jim going Fuzzy, to... Mary and I are going to be married as soon as possible. But you, you'll you still be my partner. You, you're not going to move out. The cabin is large, Fuzzy. If you have no objections... <laughs> uh, by Jiminy, it'll be good to have someone around to do the cooking and all. And I'll tell you what. We have partners even. You and I and Mary will handle all the money. How's that? Fine, Fuzzy, <laughs> just fine. We have Sergeant Preston and King to thank for proving me innocent. I'm glad things turned out as they have, Jim. 
Oh, the fuzzy's out of danger, has his cash back. Crooks are behind bars. Oh, you're not leaving town right away, are you? Oh, no. I was about to add that as soon as I witness your marriage, this case will be closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Young America keeps his musical knowledge up to date by listening to Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond. Every Saturday, Johnny presents a roundup of the platters that are making musical history from coast to coast. In addition, he brings such outstanding big-name guests as Teresa Brewer, the Fontaine Sisters, and Bill Haley's Comets. Guest disc jockeys from every section of the country appear regularly to report to listeners on the top tunes in each of their hometown areas. And interesting teenagers appear on Phonorama Time to bring their viewpoints on what young America is thinking about and talking about in music and other fields as well. Everyone loves Johnny Desmond, and everyone loves his Phonorama Time show. So gather your friends and fellow music fans around this Saturday and every Saturday for the musical session you can't afford to miss. Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond on Mutual over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston was ready to start on his regular patrol when he was summoned to the office of Inspector Conrad. Sergeant, I have a communication from the Eastern Division. A constable named Blair left there several weeks ago. He has disappeared. The Eastern Division, you say, sir? Yes. Blair came from there, but his destination was Whitehorse. That's on your patrol. Yes, sir. Mallory of the East is trying to trace Blair from that end. He requests that we work out of Whitehorse. See what you can learn, Sergeant. Behind the disappearance of the man from the East, there lies a fiendish plot of selfishness, greed, and murder. There is no way to warn Sergeant Preston that he can solve the mystery only by exposing himself and his great dog, Yukon King, to the murder bullets of a killer's gun. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.